did some like, she was like Marlowe P.I. You did some detective work <laughs> on that, right? Did she do some detective work? Did I go? really she did, did do detective she work. Did. What you do in the public is public information. And I got a phone call. Tell me what you know. Well, first of all, the house that she's in is not actually where she lives. She lives in a raggedy little house across the street from the, um, the golf course. And it was from one of her, someone in her circle. And at the time, two of her bridesmaids were livid with her. Mm -hmm. And then one ended up, Matoki, what's the girl name? Matoki ended up befriending her back after she talked about I mean, her, how she didn't pay. Out, I'll girl. call the names. I'm going to call a spade a spade. It's the oh damn my truth. God. So Matoki called her out. She didn't pay her the money she was uh, supposed to for doing the wedding, the hair. Or she wanted to charge a cheaper price. And did she call someone else in to do hair? Clearly, I don't know. Was someone I mean, else you, there to do hair, though? I, hello? I was only a guest. I mean, but we are hair stuff. I do I know, hear. like, it was a problem with funds. Then they didn't get paid until she met us at Candy's. Because she knew I got the tea. So she scraped up that money. I'm telling you. The lady who called Marlo mm -hmm. was telling Marlo that she was using her home to yeah. shoot in, right? The lady who called it was her house, and that Eva would come and over. And she would have stage. guests over to a home that okay. she was staging. Yeah, and they said that she didn't even know how to work the uh, stove one day. I don't know. It, you know. You know, it's a stretch for me. It's a stretch. I think Tanya said she visits her and she had pictures, pictures of her and Mike. The... And there was a room that was that her daughter's room. So that's a stretch. I, I, I would have thought she lived there. If she had a daughter's I room. I would have thought and... that too. And I bought her a sunflower or a plant to go in her house. I wouldn't have even gave her that sunflower. She didn't have anywhere to take it. Oh, oh my God. God. Lord Jesus, somebody get me, help me with this. Now, Marla, you did confront her with this information, right, about the houses. How did that come about? Well, she told us about the houses after we confronted her. No, we didn't confront we her. Did we not just talked. Confront... She walked out of that old lady okay? game. I'm trying to let you know that I ask all those questions to Marlo because no, she, that's not she fair. Has you all need the to ask questions I, also. Marlo, I don't know about. Uh, well, you could just tell what didn't... you do know. Okay, I jump in when I. Can't. Okay, what do you know that happened to that old lady gang? Nothing. I'm never listening to you. I'm gone. I'm, I'm calling Mike. Here you go. No, no. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm so sorry. I am in the midst of my honeymoon bliss. So to hear just despicable dirt, this whole thing just stinks, and I don't want nothing to do with it. So thank you, excuse me, and good day. Are you kidding me? By the time I arrived, Tanya had already spilled the beans to Eva. No one else there would be able to get Eva to return. So I mm -hmm. called her because I knew I could get her back. And then her mm -hmm. husband came. Uh, oh, in the old car, that old, old Ford Mustang? No, I'm saying it was like old as sh I was like, damn, at least I got out of 95. What year was that Mustang? I mean, I mean, well, no, it wasn't a classic either. Just old. Okay, okay but anyway, we're not talking about that one now. Let me stop talking about people, God forgive me. Listen, she mentioned something about her safety and that they had three homes that they move between. Yeah, but the problem you is that they don't understand the gravity of oh, her you know, security concerns. I know, concerns. I, know. I was we with a f***ing cuckoo. To the point we've had conversations with Yeah, we got the mm -hmm. FBI involved yeah, in his So mm -hmm. we don't reveal our address. We have mm -hmm. multiple addresses. Mm -hmm. Some are under aliases. I don't know, that's, I don't know anything. So, now. you think she has three? Marlo, listen, I'm not looking up her deeds. No, I'm things. not either, but do you, you know think what I'm saying? I'm just saying all the humble. You think you she know. has three homes? <laughs> <laughs> See, you full of it. Call her out. I so think I should regular in regular fashion when yeah. someone comes with the sh and I dismissed yeah. it. But I also knew that I was not going to sit here and hold court with him about it. Like, I'm not doing this. I just yeah. got back from my honeymoon. So, to come, to celebrate Candy's business deal of the week, because yeah. <laughs> she always has one. It's like, I'm not jumping into that. So I appreciate what Tanya said. Uh. I was gonna exit stage left, nice and easy. And when I leave, that's when Nini calls me and she's like, why'd you leave? Come explain yourself. I'm like, I don't owe any of these women an explanation. At this point, uh, even addressing or commenting on this woman's rant, she doesn't deserve me speaking on it. And these women, I don't owe them an explanation. But you knew to about this me. At this point, I knew about yes. it. Yes. So I left. And my husband 
I told him I was coming home. And he was like, why are you coming home? I thought you just, you just got there. I'm like, babe, uh. I'm not explaining this to them. And he's like, you don't owe them anything. But because it's already on the table, you finish it. Ooh. He's like, you're not going Michael home. Sterling. Don't come home. He said, furthermore, I'm coming up there to you. So what did you ultimately tell everybody? That it was none of their damn business how I live my life and leave me alone and don't ask me again and let them know I owe none of you any explanation about how I live my life, one way or another. I don't have to tell you about my credit, if it's good, or tell you she lied, or tell you, well, this is what, I don't owe none of that. But since it's on the table, I'm gonna deal with it and don't ever bring it up again. Apparently there was some friction with Eva's bridesmaids. Right. I was at the wedding. I didn't see anything but a beautiful bride coming down the aisle and getting married. Right. Well, apparently there was a lot of stuff going on in Behind the background. The Marlo made a phone call. Okay. It was somebody who knows you. Mm -hmm. This girl was kind of spilling some negative stuff. Mm -hmm. She was like, Eva isn't living in this house. And she was like, you know, I know the person who owns that house. Like, your credit is bad. How does she Hold on, pause. Wait, hold on. Yes. We don't know who she was. Believe me, there are not that many people in my life. I know exactly who she was. She's not anonymous. So apparently, like, my bridemaid had gotten into a fight with my wedding planner. I had what? no idea. It was one of those, like, candy portion candy. situations I like, where weird. I guess someone must have escorted her out or asked her graciously to leave. I don't know. But for some reason, she blamed me, the bride, hosting 239 people. <sighs> like, how would I even know that this happened? The night of my wedding, I get a text message from one of my friends that's, like, extremely foul. And then the next morning, I get a message. The night from the, of your the, wedding? The night of my wedding at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. The message is, like, you kicked me out and I'm supposed to be your friend, but it's cool, like, it's cool. We can consider this relationship a wash. And I'm like, she went from like standing next to me and holding my child to calling Marlo, yeah. attempting to slander my name. It was definitely hard to kind of reckon with because that's supposed to be my girl. Like my ride or die friend. So for her to flip like this, I was like thrown off. My wedding planner tells me that this is a very common thing that a lot of times, and when people have weddings, the bridemaids, the closest one to them, have this green eye of envy. And I was like, she's not jealous of me, for what? Like, she's been my friend for so long, what is there to be but jealous like of? I've never said that I was Daddy Warbucks. I never said that I live in a huge anything or I'm nothing. My life ain't been no crystal stare, okay? I have not this perfect, beautiful girl that's had this great life and this man has swept her off her feet. Like, I went through real domestic violence. Like, I went through a really, really sh time in life. And so I am so happy to be here, but what I learned is that where I am is where she wants to be. She didn't want any of my struggles. She didn't want to do all the work it takes to get here. And it's like, so your life sucks because this is what you do. That's karma. why your life isn't where it needs to be. Everyone deserves a beautiful life, everyone. But the good Lord is gonna give you out of the end of your life, what you put into it. And you at 50, mm -hmm. running around acting 40, like a 12 year old, like. So bad. It's just disgusting, but I'm going to get every good thing God has for me out of it. And I'm gonna let her sit there and watch every piece of it. And you think you're mad now. What did you think of Eva's wedding dress? How in awful. The wedding, in the wedding? At no, not in the wedding. Oh. The wedding, she did good in the wedding. She yeah, I thought good. her dresses looked good at the wedding. They just didn't come from Dubai, like she lied and said they did. <laughs> Girl, you had three dresses. That, that's Nene's fault, though. <laughs> that's Nene's fault. You, you had, had three dress changes. Uh, yeah. Yes. That is totally fine. Nene definitely influenced that. We were talking, um, I talked to her a lot actually with planning my wedding and she said that, she asked me about my dress. And so I was telling her and she's like, oh child, you can't have just one dress. Oh. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, child, you gotta change. You gotta have your ceremony dress and you have to change child to your reception dress. And then you gotta oh. wear something you're in real nice and nasty to leave in. Bling down, titty city, give me a leg, show that booty, thump, thump, what you talking about? And I was like, oh, okay. So I initially thought it was crazy. But then, but it, then starts... it started marinating and I was like, that is the perfect idea. Okay, and so, I like it. Well, you looked gorgeous. Thank you. But the dresses, she did good with her dresses. I have to say that, she did. I was really mm -hmm. excited that they were not basic at all. I've always been strong. 
Your loyalty. Yeah, my loyalty my was like tested. So tested. When you got diagnosed with cancer, I felt like my marriage was lost. The times when you've been like extremely mean, I felt like I want to break up, I want to divorce, I want to something because it's just, it's just, it's just been very hard. I, I obviously I've been with Greg since I was 28. Greg is much older than me. So he's had all of my best years, I think. And these last few good years I got, I was gonna try to spend them with some, somebody else. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, um, I've been with him a long time and um, I felt like I've, I've put up with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I don't know, we was just, I wanted to probably change all of those things and go a different direction. Yeah, oh, no. because he, he was difficult. He was difficult to live with it. But now, is he less difficult? What's different now that you I don't you've know come if he's less this? difficult. I think he's more aware of his tone. I think he's more aware of, he's trying to help, he doesn't have patience, so he's trying to work on his patience. Uh, and then, you know, I've gotten a lot of help from people, just from social media. People telling me that as a caretaker, a lot of times the people lash out to the person that's the closest to them. Um, he's sick, he's not gonna have any patients. Absolutely. And that kind of stuff. So I've got a lot of help from a lot of people. Well, I'm glad you stayed. Yes, I know that I'm doing the right thing. You are, absolutely. I know I'm doing the right thing because I took a vow. So I will stick with him through anything. And um, I'm gonna ride with him, you know, till the wheels fall off like I'm supposed to ride with him. Right. And he texts me every day, like, you know, like, you know what, you was a real strong bitch. Like, I, I love exactly. your ass, because your ass good. is sticking um, with me. <laughs> high five yeah. on that one. You He's are like, that I love now. you for staying with my ass. Like, no, he knew seriously. then that I was a real bitch.